Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. It's been almost a week since I last uploaded a video. So in order to make up for lost time, here is a song that I created. Do you have a Retroid Pocket 5? Ryan, Retro makes it come alive. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Wii U emulation. So I also made a little jingle about that too. We'll play And stick around to the end of the video where I'll play more of that banger. But for now, let's jump into the new version of Simu, which just released last week. This is the first new version release since the Retroid Pocket 5 came out. So I'm really interested to see if it'll fix a few of the issues I had before. The three things that are on my to-do list to check if now work are seeing if we can now get past the first race in Mario Kart 8. Seeing if Yoshi has a face in Yoshi's Woolly World, because before his head was just a void. And seeing if we can now turn off the screen while in a game. And seeing if it'll keep our play session properly when we turn the screen back on. Because before it didn't have a true sleep mode and it would just close down any game you had running. So I'm going to give you a spoiler right away. Members of my community on Discord have told me that the Mario Kart 8 issue is unfortunately still broken. We can't play Mario Kart 8 on here if you want to play more than one race, but the good news is you can play it on the secret console using settings found on my compatibility spreadsheet. So let's jump into number two and see if Yoshi's face is now back. You will see it's compiling shaders here, which I showed how to install in my previous Wii U video. So if you'd like to do that for yourself, check that video out, because that does get rid of a lot of the stuttering and frame drops and allows you to have a much smoother experience with Wii U emulation. I remember the frame rate last time being very low around this area. It seems like we have 30 right now. And then once we jumped into the actual game last time, we unfortunately didn't have a face. And this time we do have a face. So that has indeed been fixed. That is great to see. The performance also looks really nice. The frame rate is fluctuating, but staying in the 50s, which leads to a really nice smooth experience. This is definitely smoother than I remember the experience being last time I tried this game. And while also having a face, which makes it far better to play. So upon first glance, it seems that Yoshi's Woolly World is now very nicely playable. And I'm just really happy that we have a face now. Ooh, lovely. This is such a nice looking game, especially on the OLED screen. It looks really beautiful. Oh, but we did just experience a crash. So this emulator is definitely not rock solid, but I'm just happy we have a face now. So let's keep working and hopefully we'll get more stability in the future. I still don't see many settings that we can really change. We don't have anything like resolution scaling and I cannot really see any way to change the driver we're using. So we are mostly just stuck with what you see is what you get at the moment. So let's jump into some more games. I actually have over a hundred games here that we could try out and I am considering doing a live stream in the near future where I can try out a lot more and answer your questions live. So if you'd like to see a live stream, please let me know. For now, let's jump into a game that I think is one of the most beautiful games ever made. This is Little Prince Boy, The Breeze Ariser. If you look at the frame rate counter in the top left of the screen, you'll see we're mostly at 30 frames per second, but there are some noticeable dips down at the low twenties and you can feel that. So I do prefer playing the original version of this game. And of course you can then mess around with upscaled textures as well and internal resolution scaling. Dolphin just has so many more options than Simu at this point. But if you would like to try this out, it is mostly playable here on Outset Island. But I have also heard reports from my community that later in the game on later islands, it becomes a little bit trickier to run. So with this frame rate dipping down to the low twenties from Outset Island, I would recommend the original Dolphin version but you can definitely try this version if you want because it looks beautiful here. It's just absolute eye candy of a game. So feel free to check it out, but I'm not going to show too much more in this test because we're just on Outset Island and it does get a lot more tricky as the game goes on. So let's jump into another game now. If you've watched the channel before, you'll know I'm a huge fan of FIFA games and I've not yet tried this, so I'm going to be trying it for the first time with you guys. Let's see if we can run FIFA 13 on here. After leaving it to load for a little while, it seems FIFA is just a black screen. I can hear some sounds, but I can't see anything on the screen. So unfortunately, like many FIFA games, it's not going to be playable right now. I'll scroll through my games list now, so feel free to shout out any games you'd like to see me play on a live stream. And I do actually have a few more that are not here right now, just because I ran out of space on my SD card.
and I'll pick a random game to jump into and see if it's working. As a big fan of SpongeBob, let's check out Plankton's Robotic Revenge. One thing that's nice about Wii U emulation is if a game does work, it generally loads up instantly and runs pretty well. If you've dabbled with Windows or PlayStation 3 emulation recently, you'll know that some games take a while to load and you can't even be sure if they're even working or not for a little while as you wait for it to compile and load the game. But Wii U basically loads instantly, which is really nice considering the graphics are pretty good. I'll skip through the intro cutscenes so we can get into the actual gameplay and see how it runs. And while I do this, I'll show you my impression of SpongeBob's laugh. <coughs> The cutscene is finally over and let's see what we have to do. Right away I'll say I like Spongebob's model here. It's not often you control a character that's a cuboid. Oh, our attack is a big foam finger smash. The game feels very smooth. The frame rate is fluctuating between the 40s and 50s. It feels very, very smooth. Noticeably smoother than 30 frames per second, that's for sure. What an interesting game. Oh, let's get a gizmo. I thought we'd already exhausted all the options of the game, but apparently there's more. We can get a pickle blaster. Okay, so we now have a kind of gun. We also seem to have combo attacks. If I smash the melee button, it does a little two-handed spin. It feels like they added more mechanics to this game than they actually needed to. We found our first chest. Well, this game is pretty interesting. I don't think the likes of Mario, Zelda and Halo have anything to worry about anytime soon, but I can imagine kids who like SpongeBob really enjoying this and it runs very, very smoothly. So let's now test if it can sleep or not. I'm going to turn off the screen, put the device down. I'm going to go away for five minutes, come back and see if it's still in the game. Let's go. Okay, five minutes are up. Let's see if the game is still working. No, it's not. So five minutes obviously is not a very long time, but it's long enough that the game has closed down. Looking through the settings, I don't see anything here about keeping the games open in the background. So unfortunately, that's still a problem with Simu. So if you are going to turn off the screen of the device, make sure you save your game first because sleeping the device might cause your game to crash and you might lose your progress. I couldn't make a Wii U test video without my girlfriend's favorite secret console game, Lieutenant Frog Bounty Finder. The game's running really smooth here. It does feel like it's running a little bit slow, almost like slow motion. As I'm walking around, everything just looks a bit sluggish. But my eyes might be deceiving me because the frame rate is fine and also the music is fine. It just seems like everything's a little bit slow motion. I definitely think something odd's happening here. I'm curious if this has anything to do with the shaders that I compiled before starting the game. Let me just bring up the secret console version to compare. The screen of the Retroid Pocket 5 is much better than this. I really hope the new version of this has this kind of screen. But anyway, let's jump into the game and we're going to have a little race here. Lieutenant Frog versus Lieutenant Frog. Three, two, one, go! And it seems that they do reach the same point at the same time. But there's something very slow and sluggish about this one. Whereas this is much faster and smoother. Hopefully if I move the camera around, you can see this, but it is really hard for me to rotate both devices at the same time. It feels like that thing you do as a kid where you tap your head at the same time as rubbing your stomach in a circle. It's, it's impossible. Okay, three, two, one. Definitely much, much, much smoother and snappier on the original console and something funny is going on with this one. So if you know what's wrong with this, please let me know. It might be to do with the compiled shaders and in fact, let's remove the shader caches just to double check that. We're compiling new shaders as we open the game and I don't think this will have any effect, but I just want to try it just to rule it out. Now, for some reason, I'm not able to push the A button. I think something's just a bit up with this game, to be honest, but this game does run absolutely perfectly on the secret console, so just play it there. So as you can see, we are running into quite a few issues with Wii U emulation. And if there's a version available for other systems like the secret console or the GameCube, I would urge you to use those instead. But what about Wii U exclusives? Maybe they will give us a reason to keep using this emulator. Like Family Party, 30 Great Games Obstacle Arcade, which won't let me choose how many players I want to use, which could possibly be due to my controller configuration, but anyway, is not working for me. And Splatoon, which I think will be one of the most popular use cases for emulating the Wii U. For anyone who doesn't know what Splatoon is, it's basically the original version of Squid Game, where you run around shooting each other, kind of like paintball. I remember seeing this advertised all over the place when it first came out. And I had the chance to play it in a few stores that had games set up, but I really don't remember how to play it. So I'm looking forward to jumping into it now. 
Straight away we need gyroscopic controls. So we're going to need to come into the settings here and enable motion with this first checkbox. Now we should be able to get past this screen. And as you can see, it is working. The problem is it's going to be hard for me to show you the screen like this. The problem is it seems to naturally be pointing up to the sky. And if I point the device down like this to look forward, it's going to be really hard to show it to you. So we're going to need to exit the game and come into the main settings of the app. And I'm going to change the emulator's controller to one that doesn't support motion, like the Wii U Pro Controller or Classic Controller. Now back in the game, having mapped the controller to either the Pro Controller or the Classic Controller, we actually have no input whatsoever. And I'm not able to find a way to fix this. So we have no choice but to set the controller back to the original Wii U gamepad, which means once again, we'll run into that issue of having to point the console down in order to look forward in the game. In some other emulators I've used before, you can actually map one of the buttons to reset the pointer into the middle. I know that you can do that with Wii emulation in Dolphin, for example. You can click a button and then the pointer or the motion will go straight back to the middle of the screen. As far as I can tell, there's no way to do that inside Simu. So that is a bit of a problem right now. If you do know a way to fix this, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll make sure to include that in a pinned comment or a follow up video. So I've set the controls back to the original and I'm unfortunately just going to have to do this like a maniac, but hopefully you can get an idea of how well the game runs and I will talk you through it too. So this is quite an interesting filming experience. It does seem to be working quite well. It's just quite difficult to do this and also keep it within the camera frame. Something definitely doesn't need to be done to fix this because looking forward should be like this. But in actuality, it's like this. Basically, instead of holding the Retro Pocket 5 like this, I'm holding it like this as the neutral point, which is not very convenient to look at generally and definitely not very convenient to make a video about. But if you're not filming a video and you can bear with looking around like this, it is playable and it is actually playing quite smoothly. We just need to calibrate this gyroscope. But I do know for a fact that the gyroscope in my Retro Pocket 5 is well calibrated because it works totally fine in all other games. So as you can see from this video, Simu really is a mixed bag. There's lots of crashing. It doesn't go to sleep properly. It just crashes out of the game again. But there are also improvements over the previous version. Yoshi has a face now. And I have seen some reports of other games working that were not working before too. So an updated app is most definitely welcome. I will include the link to this updated app in the description of the video as well. So check that out with all my other links too. If you'd like to buy your own Retroid Pocket 5, you can also find my affiliate link in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another video and I'll play you out now with this absolute banger of a tune I've created from me Ryan Retro. Bye! Ryan Retro.